Hey Flosstube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 16th Flosstube video and it will be my update for my progress in June 2017 and I also plan on talking a little bit about my plans for July along with a couple of other things. Uh, but once again I want to thank everybody for commenting on my videos. Uh, thank you for liking my videos and thank you for subscribing to my channel. I really enjoy hearing from you and hearing your opinions. Also, if you are new to this to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy this video and that you would consider subscribing. So uh, let's get let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to do is respond to some comments that I've had since I posted my last video. Uh, one of the things that I talked about in my last video was about Alex at Alex Stitch and about uh, a piece that he had featured. This uh, Jacobian cruel, cruel work, and I and I had uh, Ludmilla seventeen twelve. Let me know that the piece that he featured is from a book called Cruel Intentions, and that he is actually working. He was actually working on the Ru Russian translation of the book. Um, he, it is actually a book that is available in English on Amazon. Uh, it's written by a lady named Hazel Blomkamp. And she's written two books. Uh, one is Cruel Intentions and the other is Cruel Twists that are, have her designs in it. They both look like they're really cool. And I also found out that she has a website uh, where she sells kits for her designs and also for, some, uh, for her designs that are in the books as well as some other, uh, other designs that she has. Uh, she, uh, apparently she lives in uh, South Africa and her kits are very well, very reasonably priced. So if you're interested, uh, you can check her out. Uh, Kelly Sluter asked me about how I'm doing with my crochet nativity set that I'm crocheting for my wife. Um, I haven't been really, really good at stitching. I am working on it. Um, I have decided that I'm going to crochet everything and then assemble everything at the end. So I really don't have a lot to show. I've just got a bunch of crochet little pieces. Um, I've stitched Joseph. I've stitched um, the baby Jesus. I'm, the next one I'm going to stitch is a wise man. I have a goal to finish that by, by Christmas time. So I guess I, I've got six months, but I guess I better get a little bit uh, working on it a little bit more. I try to do it on Saturdays and sometimes sometimes my Saturdays are just really crazy. So um, Diana Ainsworth asked me uh, what is the tune that I used in my slideshow? Uh, that tune is called New Land. It's available at, for, as a free download on the U YouTube Creators channel. Um, it is royalty free which is one of the reasons why I use it. I don't know if it's available for download anywhere else, but you can you can look and see. Uh, Stephanie Natalia asked me what I would do if I was working on a piece that was landscape oriented, but that was wider than my scroll bars. And that actually happened to me once. Uh, before I got my Omanique frames, I was using my lock scroll frame and Verandas of South Battery was too wide for that frame. So what I did is I rotated verandas 90 degrees and stitched it from the side. I also rotated my chart 90 degrees to make it easier to, to see how things laid. And um, the, the, probably the hardest thing about that was um, realizing that the symbols were also rotated 90 degrees. So I had to, I had to look at my key rotated 90 degrees too. And, and not let my brain think about it too much. Um, also, I had already started stitching that piece. So because I was rotated 90 degrees, I had to cross my stitches the other way so that they would match. And that kind of played with my brain a little bit, but not too bad. Um, if I were stitching a brand new piece that was too wide for my scroll bars, um, I would do the same thing. I would rotate everything 90 degrees only I, would, I, I wouldn't have to worry about uh, crossing differently uh, because I'd be working on a, on a brand new piece. Uh, Stephanie also asked me to talk a little bit about my Omanique uh, scroll frames. 
uh, and kind of give you a little bit of a review. Um, I will just say that I love my scroll frames. Uh, they give me the best tension that I've ever been able to get. Uh, they're nice and sturdy, and I just I just really love them. Um, this point was driven home to me uh, at the beginning of the week. I actually got out my lock scroll frame uh, to do something, and I just couldn't get the tension that I get on my lock scroll frame. So I just I I couldn't work on it. So um, I I love my lock, my Omanique frames. Uh, they're wide and they're sturdy and they're worth every penny that I paid for them. So if you're considering getting getting those frames, uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, McKenna at Every Stitch Counts asked me uh, what my daughters think about me cross-stitching. And they, I've been cross-stitching ever since they've been alive their entire life. So they're, they're used to it. I mean, they don't, they don't know any differently and, and they don't think it's weird. Um, do they have an interest in learning cross stitch? Uh, they have. They've shown some interest. I have my oldest daughter stitched a couple of pieces. Uh, once she went through all of my old magazines and she found a ballerina that she wanted to stitch. And she's actually a lot more adventurous than I am. She changed colors and she changed part of the design as well. Um, so she, I mean, she just kind of dived right into stitching that and it turned out really nice. Um, I'm not that adventurous. I can't change colors. I just, uh, I just can't. In my brain, I can't come up with colors that I think uh, look 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 good together. Uh, my other daughter also at one time expressed an interest in cross stitching, and I get for Christmas one year I gave her a kit that was a bunch of bookmarks that she could stitch one for each month, and she worked on them a little bit, but uh, she never finished them. She, so she kind of had some interest but uh, uh, kind of lost her kind of lost interest after a while. Um, my sons have also kind of been interested in my crafting. Uh, my oldest was interested in cross stitching at one time. He stitched a small bookmark and was really interested in stitching a great big uh, Zelda piece but he he stitched for about a month and kind of kind of lost interest in it. Um, my other son has never really been interested in my cross stitching, but he did want to learn how to knit, and I taught him how to knit, um, and he knit for about a month and lost interest. So I guess crafting hasn't really taken with them. They've kind of all shown an interest, but haven't done anything more than that. Uh, McKenna also asked me what I'm going to enter into the fair. I haven't decided yet, and I haven't even really decided if I'm going to enter anything in yet. Um, I have, I'm more open to it than I was before. I'm, I'm seriously considering it, but I would have to figure out what I wanted to enter, and then I would also have to, have to decide to to get it framed somehow. So, that's that's the the big stumbling block for me right now. Uh, Peggy, asked Peggy Shock asked me. Uh, why I prefer stitching diagonally instead of vertically. And there are several reasons for that. Uh, probably the biggest reason is uh, stitching vertically. I worry that I will put uh, faint ridges or lines in my, in, my, in my finished piece. And I think that the possibility of that happening with me stitching diagonally is a lot less. I think that uh, diagonal lines are a, lot, uh, are a lot less likely to appear. Also, um, I like the way the picture develops that way. I feel like I can get to the center of the action a little bit faster that way. I also feel like it gives me a greater uh, variety as I work through my design. Uh, so it's kind of more to keep my interest than anything else also. Um, and also I have a system that I use to to make to help my stitches be neater and stitching diagonally is kind of a part of that system uh, and kind of helps facilitate that. Uh, if you're more interested you can check out my fifth video, my fifth floss tube video uh, where I go into all of that with a little bit more detail. Uh, David Schroth asked me um, when I stitch diagonally do I spam pages or do I just work on one page at a time? Um, 
I originally started just spanning pages, but I found that if I'm working with a design that is too big, that uh, the, the diagonals get really long and they kind of get really tedious to work on. And that's kind of one of the only real disadvantage that I have with uh, stitching diagonally is when my diagonals get long, I have to scroll up and down through my piece in order to keep uh, work along the diagonal, which it, that doesn't bother me. Uh, that's, that's easy for me to do. Uh, but uh, I have decided with my heaven and earth design, it's so big that I decided to, to stitch diagonals on one page at a time. All of my other pieces I'm spanning pages. Uh, the other thing that's kind of a pain about that is that when, it, when I get to a page border, uh, sometimes I, I, have to, I have to switch back and forth between pages uh, in order to stitch that block that spans the border, but that's not too, not too bad. So, so I, I guess uh, when you talk about my preferences, I, I guess my answer is always it depends. It depends on, uh, on the design I'm working on and, and what I think works best for the way I stitch. Um, I also want to do a couple of shout outs. Uh, first of all, um, there have been a lot of male stitchers that have showed up in the last month or so. And I want to shout them out. Uh, first of all, uh, Weasley Studios. Uh, they have been talked about in several other videos, so I'm sure you already know about them. But there are a couple of guys. Uh, one of them, Adam, is Cross Stitches. And they're working on some great stuff, so check them out. Uh, also, there's another guy who's just started making videos. And his channel name is Simon Stitches. I've been following him on Instagram for a while, and it's been neat to... To see you make videos. Um, also Bearded Stitcher is another stitcher who uh, was making videos uh, more than a year ago and he stopped and he started making videos again so uh, if you haven't heard of him you might want to check him out and, and see what he's working on. Um, and then we've had a couple of other stitching men that have kind of shown up in some of other people's videos. Uh, Julie McKenna's husband, uh, sorry, Julie McConnell's husband also stitches and she did a video with him where he showed all of the pieces that he stitched and they are some really cool pieces. Uh, there's, there's one of his pieces that I am just dying to start uh, uh, and is really, it was really cool to see him uh, talk about his stitching and the thing that he, he's doing. And then also Dina at Half Stitch Cross Stitch, her son is cross stitching something right now and she's been featuring him in her videos. So I'll put links to all these videos down below and you can check them out if you want to. Uh, just want to welcome all the male stitchers. Uh, we'd love to have even more of you. So if you're on the fence about, about stitching, jump, jump right in. About, if you're on the stitch about making videos, jump right on in. It's really a, a great experience to make Floss 2 videos. Uh, I also have one other channel that I want to shout out that I found. Uh, they are D Squared X Stitching. Uh, there are a couple of ladies that, that, uh, that, ha that are making a, a videos together and they're sharing their, their works and they're working on some really cool stuff and they're really fun to watch, so check them out. Okay. So, those are all my shout outs. Uh, I'll put all the information for all of those in the notes down below. So now it's time to talk about what I've done in June. And June was a, a pretty good month for me. Um, it's been kind of a quiet month because my, uh, I, we haven't had to worry about school. Uh, and my daughter has been, my youngest daughter has been uh, to camp for a week and then she went to uh, a writer's workshop last week, so things around the house have been pretty quiet. Um, and so I've been able to do a lot of stitching. Um, here's my trend. You'll see that June looks very much like May. Uh, just a few, few. My, the number of stitches I was able to put in was a little bit low, uh, but my, the number of days that I stitched went up. I don't, I, I stitched every day in June. I didn't miss one day in June. So here's a Pareto showing the number of days that I worked on each project. 
and you'll see that I touched all of my whips again. I managed to do that. And if you add up the days here, you will notice that uh, this is more than 30 days. And the reason why that is, uh, I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but I was able to touch every, every project. Here's a Pareto uh, showing the stitches that I put in each project. And you'll see that I, uh, once again, Quota Sewn Sampler is the winner. Autumn Magic is very low, and we'll talk about why that is in a little bit. Um, if you have are new to my channel, I think I'll just point out that uh, the number of stitches that I put in, you kind of have to take with a grain of salt. Uh, they're more a measure of the amount of area that I've covered in the chart rather than the number of stitches that I've stitched. Uh, and that is because if I'm working on a piece that's not full coverage, I don't want to take the time, uh, if I'm stitching a 100 stitch block, I don't want to take the time to count how many stitches are actually stitched and how many are empty inside that block. So I just count 100 stitch blocks, really. So this is more a, a, a measurement of the amount of area that I have stitched in the chart. And since we are halfway through the year, we're in July, and six months have passed, I thought I'd do a yearly update. So at year to date, this is a Pareto that's showing every project that I've worked on and the number of days that I've worked on each project. And I kind of find it interesting that on Autumn Magic, I've stitched on that more than anything else because um, I, I didn't realize that I had done that. Uh, Veranda's a South Battery is pretty high, and I think that's because I went on a finishing frenzy and I wanted to get it finished. Uh, but it's finished now, and there's not going to be any more days added to that. So there's a good possibility that it's going to drop down in relation to the other projects as the year goes along. Here's a Pareto showing the number of stitches that I've stitched. And you'll see once again, Corazon Sampler is the winner. Uh, that's the piece that has the most negative space in the pieces that I've been working on. Uh, but everything looks good, so I'm really happy with that. And finally, here's a trend of the number of finishes I've had. I, I think I've shown this in my last video, I don't remember. But what I will say is, I just want to point out that I Year to date, I have as many finishes as I did all of last year. And also, I think I'm on track to get more than these, more than three finishes. I think that there's a good possibility that I will actually break my record of four finishes in a year. So things seem to be going pretty well as far as that goes. It's turning out to be a good, a good stitching year. So let's talk about what I worked on. And the first piece that I worked on was my pintail deck. And this is, this is it. And if you remember, this is a series of four duck decoys. They're still lifes that were painted by Judy Gibson. And the adaptation was done by Donna Vermillion Giampa. Um, this is from the For the Love of Cross Stitch magazine, November 1994 issue. I, I've already stitched Mallard, and I am working on Pintail, which is this one up here. And I'll put in a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So I've been able to stitch uh, more than half of the design. I'm more than halfway through. Um, you'll see I've hit the edge of the, of the cloth that the decoy is sitting on. And in fact, I'm almost finished with the cloth. And all I'll have left to do is more shelf that looks like this and the rest of the duck. Uh, the duck's really starting to take shape. You'll see this is the the weight that I think that's used to anchor it into in the water. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way this is looking so far. Um, this cloth, this 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 design is taking me a little bit longer to stitch than um, than Mallard did, and I th and part of the reason why is there's a lot of color changes in this cloth that weren't in the Mallard cloth. 
So, but yeah, I'm really happy with the way this is looking so far. Uh, this is fun to work on. Uh, I still like my bigger projects better. I, I like finishing it, but it, I just don't have the same feeling as, of accomplishment as I get with my big pieces. Uh, and on my blog, which I don't keep a lot of, I, I'm not really good at updating. Um, I had somebody ask me about how the way I stitch, what it, the back looks like. So I'm going to be brave and I'm going to show you the back of, of, of all of my projects so that you can see. And so this is the back of, of Mallard. Um, you'll see uh, there's, there's kind of a lot of places. Uh, it's kind of messy, but not too bad. Uh, what I found is that the more confetti, the more color changes that there are in a piece, the messier my back becomes. But if there aren't a lot of color changes, then my back looks pretty decent. Uh, she also asked how far I, I, I will carry. And I won't carry across uh, a, I won't carry across a part of the design that's not stitched. But I, I, I'm pretty liberal in carrying if, if I know that, that that part of the design is going to be stitched. And I'll, I'll carry up to 10 stitches. Um, on my heaven and earth, I'll carry even further just because um, the number, the stitches are smaller. So on the heaven and earth design that I'm stitching one over one, uh, carrying 20 stitches is equivalent to carrying 10 on something like this. So I'll even carry that that far on my heaven and earth design. So there's that. Um, the next piece that I worked on uh, is Let Freedom Ring. Uh, this is by Lila's Studio. There are a lot of you are stitching this, uh, and uh, we have a Facebook group, the Let Freedom Ring Sampler Stitch Along. If you want to stitch this, or if you are stitching this and aren't uh, part of the group yet, uh, feel free to join. We would love to have you. We're all stitching this together. Uh, not a lot of rules, just uh, anybody who's working on it, uh, you can come in and post your progress and talk about some of the things that you're seeing with the design. It's been great so far. Um, I'm stitching mine on 32 count cream uh, Belfast linen. And I'll insert a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So I was able to stitch this entire bottom border. I finally finished this. Last time I complained about the oak leaves. My oak leaves are finished. I also finished the horse and the carriage. And I've started working on Independence Hall. As, I, as I've seen everybody else, it seems to me like they're, they're a lot further along because they've been stitching the building. But when I look at my spreadsheets, um, they tell me that this, this bottom part right here is 25% of the design. It's a quarter of the design. So I think I'm actually further along than it feels like. Um, I'm excited to start working on the building. And my plans are is I'm going to just work across and do the entire building. And then I'll do the flowers in the corners and the, and the top section as well. So this is coming along pretty well. Really enjoying working on it. Um, and I'll show you the back. Um, and you'll see, yeah, this one I'm not really parking on, so... So it looks pretty neat. Uh, the next piece that I worked on is my Corazon sampler. Uh, this is a design by Claude Rami Designs. Uh, she has a website where she sells several, several designs that are similar to this. Uh, so if this doesn't strike your fancy, you could check out her website and there may be something that does. Uh, they're all monochromatic red designs like this. Of course, you could use a different color than red if you wanted to. Uh, I'm stitching mine on 36 count antique white Edinburgh linen. 
I am stitching it with DMC 815, which is a the called for red, and it's a really deep dark red that I really like. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here we go. This is what it looks like now. So I've gotten quite a bit done. When I was stitching on this this month, I was actually tempted to just keep on working on it and actually finish it. But I didn't. Uh, I got to a point where I decided it was time to put it up. But what I did do is I stitched these, uh, these roses here. And if you're working on this design, I just want to point out, in the, as charted, these roses aren't symmetrical. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference on each one. And I wanted mine to be all the same, so I ended up stitching this top one, and then I rotated my chart three times and stitched the, uh, all three times. I don't know if the fact that they're not symmetrical is a mistake or if that was intentional, but I like, I like them being symmetrical. So that's what I did. And I know that there's another design of hers that has this same circle of roses that is not symmetrical. So I, I stitched the, the circle of roses. My initials and date will, will go in here. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to put 2017 in here, but I don't want to do it yet because I don't want to jinx, my, jinx myself. And I stitched this alphabet. Um, I finished this alphabet, stitched this alphabet, part of this alphabet, and I brought the borders down. So they are down to the point where it's time to start a corner like this up here. And if you look at it, I have about this much. I have that much to stitch down here. Now this up here took me two, two weeks, two times through my rotation to stitch. So I'm anticipating that I'm going to have about the same amount of time through here. Uh, I, these, these letters take a while to stitch and there's eight left that I need to stitch. But yeah, no, I'm really enjoying this. I always love, uh, when I finish working on it, taking it out of the scroll bars and seeing how much it's, seeing how it looks all put together. So that looks good. I'll, I'll turn it over so you can see the back. And of course, this is a single color, so it's not going to be very, very interesting, but you'll see. I don't carry from one letter to the other. Each letter is stitched individually. So, um, so yeah, I won't carry across the, the negative space. But yeah, that's looking good. Uh, the next piece that I worked on is English Garden Sampler by Teresa Wensler. I'm stitching this on 25 Count Lugana. Um, and I am using Sullivan's Floss instead of DMC. I forgot to mention that a couple times. I'm using Sullivan's because I, I wanted to try Sullivan's. Um, and this is what this design looked like the last time you saw it. So, and this is what it looks like now. So you have to pull back to see the entire border, but I've been working just in here. I've stitched another couple of diagonals. So this is coming even more into focus. I love how it's looking. I, it's really confetti heavy. Uh, I, I go really slow on it because of that, but I am finding that I, I'm just really enjoying the process with this one. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me that I'm going slow. I, and I'm just really enjoying seeing everything uh, come come into place. You'll notice I've hit the bottom of this column, and the, actually the bottom of this scene is right here, so pretty soon my diagonals are going to stop growing. Um, yeah, I just love it. Now, as far as Sullivan's go uh, goes, what I've found is it. I think it tends to, my part threads tend to tangle a little bit more easily. Um, 
and the colors are a little bit different. I mean, they're DMC equivalents, but there's there's a little bit of a difference in them, and I think I like the DMC shades a little bit better. So I don't think I'm going to use Sullivan's again, but it was a good exper experiment. And I don't I don't I don't hate thing. I mean, I think it looks really good, so I'm not going to uh, give up on this and restart it in DMC. I, I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way it looks. It's just, I don't think I'll ever use Sullivan's again. But there it is. It's looking good. Um, okay. The next piece that I worked on is a Winter Sampler. This is a design by Sandy Orton. Uh, she's part of Cooler Design Studio. And I am stitching this on 28 count tea dyed Monaco. And this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. I am I'm really happy with this piece and it's getting re it's really fun to work on in fact. I almost continued working on it, but I I wanted to get to my next piece just just because I wanted to finish work on my next piece before the month ended as well. So I've basically stitched this diagonal and started this next one. I finished the gingerbread man. Santa is finished too. All that's left is there's a little bit of the frame and then there's some blue background that goes in here. So Santa is, is, is for all practical intents and purposes, is finished. This clock is really starting to show up. Uh, I'm starting to see another mouse. There's, there's a mouse up here. Uh, this banner is, I've hit the top of the banner. And actually the corner, the top corner of the piece is right here. And I'm really excited about that. I feel like I'm getting over the hump because once I hit this corner, then my diagonals are going to start shrinking and I look forward to that. So I'm feeling I'm I'm like 50%, I'm halfway through now and I'm feeling like I'm getting over the hump and that things are going to start going a little bit better. Uh, this white right through here, this is kind of a slog to go through because it's so much white and I like that going the diagonals through here, I only have to stitch like a strip of white uh, if I wasn't doing it diagonally, then I'd end up doing this great big huge a great big huge mass of white, and I don't know that I would enjoy doing that. But it's really starting to take shape. I'm really loving it. I'm excited to see more of it. Ah, I forgot to show you the back on my Teresa Winsler. I'll show you that in a minute. Here's the back of this one. Um, there's this this one isn't really confetti heavy except for down around here the sand is pretty confetti heavy but yeah I don't think it looks too bad while I'm showing you backs here's the back of my Teresa Wensler which is confetti heavy and this is what that looks like. So, yeah, this is probably one of my messier backs. But it doesn't look too bad to me. Okay. So, uh, and then I also worked on And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. I'm stitching this on uh, 32 Count Antique White Madonna. And this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. This continues to be a fun piece. And I stitched basically this page here. Uh, the page boundary is here, so this tree goes over into the next page. I finished this great big tree trunk, more of this tree and these words. Um, I really wasn't looking forward to the to the tree trunk, so it's, I'm glad 
that I got it out of the way and it actually turned out to be not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, this tree, that tree took me a long time to stitch as compared to some of the other trees. And the reason why is I had to stitch almost every leaf individually. Uh, thank you, Vana, for your uh, diagonal pin stitch tutorial. I started using that on this tree and it's, it really is uh, really has made a difference. I'm finding that I am preferring using that uh, the more that I the, the more that I use it I really like it. So as I work on this I'm trying to decide whether to come this way and finish the bottom and then come back or whether to start up here and work this way. Um, I'm actually considering doing a line of text with the page and then a line of text and another page there are as many lines of text as there are pages remaining. Um, and so I could do a line of text and do a page and then eventually finish it all. I've had two pages now where it's been like this page was mostly this up here. This page is this. So I haven't stitched a lot of trees. And I'm starting to miss stitching trees. So that's kind of why I'm leaning towards going this way is because I want to stitch some more trees. I am halfway through. This is about the halfway mark, so I'm happy about that too. I have stitched seven pages. There are seven pages left. Yeah, this one's really fun. Uh, and I'll show you the back. So this is another one. I actually kind of park on each tree. I, uh, how do I say this? I, 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 am, I work through each tree pretty systematically, but overall, uh, I think they, they look pretty good. Okay. Now, as I got towards time when it was time to work on Autumn Magic, I, I really wasn't very excited about stitching it. I, I was, I'm just kind of in a bad place with that. And I was actually considering not working on it at all and putting it up for a while. Uh, not necessarily giving up on it, but just taking a break from it. And, uh, but, but at the beginning of last week, I had this idea that I thought I'd try. And that idea was, um, if I stitch one block a night, um, instead of stitching on it for an entire week, uh, maybe I wouldn't get quite so burned out on it. Uh, maybe, maybe I would get a lot more progress because one block a night would give me 30 blocks a month. And 30 blocks a month would be a lot more than I'm stitching right now. So it would, uh, that still isn't really very fast. I mean, my spreadsheet says that if I stitch one block a month, uh, that I will finish it sometime in eight, October 2025 which is eight years. That's a long time to be working on it. So, uh, but I've tried that for about four or five days now, and I actually like, I'm, I'm actually enjoying working on it. It's nice to say, okay, I'm only gonna stitch 100 stitches, and then just leave it at that. So I'll, I'll show you I'm working on Autumn Magic. That's this. It's a design by Randall Spangler, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I am, uh, I'll, I'll show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of, of progress because I, I haven't been working on it that long. But I'm happy with what I've done. And I, I, I think I, I like how, how I'm doing this. So this is, this is what it looks like now. So I've finished this diagonal and I've started working on this diagonal. Here's the top of the page, which is kind of nice. I found the top of the page, and now my diagonals are going to start shrinking. Um, and I really like how, how things are taking shape. So I think I'm going to continue doing that. I mean, I, 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 my goal is to kind of do uh, one block a night on this. And that may not, I may not do it all the time. I mean, if I have a night when I, I don't have a lot of time to stitch, I may not do that. 
or I may get to the point where I want to work on Automagic a little more, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll work on it exclusively for one night. I, I'm, I'm kind of being a little bit flexible about that, but I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll see what happens when I, uh, I haven't been working out the blocks that I've stitched so far this way, um, haven't been really confetti heavy. So we'll see what happens when I hit a block where it takes me two hours to stitch. Cause I've had blocks that take two hours to stitch and that's when I really get discouraged. So we'll see what happens when something like that happens. But so far I'm liking that. And so that's what I'm planning on doing. Uh, I'm planning on doing that, uh, one block. Uh, one block a day and we'll see how much more progress I get okay so that's everything that I worked on my plans for July um, I am planning on just working the same way I'm doing uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll plan on having uh, we'll see how far I get if I can touch all my whips I kind of think that I'm not going to be able to and part of the reason for that is that uh, at the end of the month, we are going to be celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, we're going to be out of town. And I'm going to be in a place where there's tons of people, tons of kids. And so I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time to stitch. Um, and so I think I'm going to go several days without stitching. I'm stealing myself for that. I hope I don't get too twitchy. I'll be, but we'll, uh, we'll face that when it comes. Um, also, I've had over over the past few months, I've had people request that I uh, make videos uh, showing at, of me stitching, and I think I've I I haven't done that because I I really have a hard time figuring out how to per, uh, position the camera so that it looks good and the angle is really hard to get. Right? I almost have to have would almost have to put my camera on my forehead for it to look really good and even then then I'd be moving back and forth and that would make you really dizzy so I I've had a hard time doing that I think I've come up with a good compromise I made a couple of I made a couple of recordings I haven't looked at them to see whether or not I like them yet so we'll see how that goes but look for some videos of me stitching in the coming uh, coming months. I'm not going to release them all at once because I don't want to flood everybody with a bunch of videos, but maybe over the next month you'll see a couple of me videos of me stitching. I have one final thing that I that I want to show you and it's over here. So I've got to I've got to leave the camera for a sec. So, um a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from Attic Needlework from the framer there telling me that my piece was finished, framed, that it was framed and ready to be picked up. And she called me on a Thursday, and Attic is usually closed by the time I get out of work. But on Thursdays, they are open late because they have a stitching group. They have a bunch of women that come in and, and stitch on Thursday evenings. And so I thought, oh, they're going to be open. So I, I went and picked it up as soon as I got off work. And when I walked in the door, one of the ladies saw me and said, is it finished? And I said, yeah, I got a call saying it was. And she said, well, let's, let's get it. So she went and got the framer and the framer brought it out. And, and she had it all wrapped up in bubble wrap and she unwrapped it to show me. And when she, when she, when she uh, showed it to me, I was just like, oh, it looks so beautiful. It looks so wonderful. And the other lady that was there said, well, we've got to show it to all the women. So they took it and showed it to everybody there. And I had to answer a bunch of questions about it. And that was, that was kind of fun. Uh, the ladies were like asking me if I'd stitched it. And I said, yeah, I did. And uh, one of them said, does your wife tell you what you have to stitch? And I said, no. She said that there was a guy in there that, that was uh, shopping for patterns and and uh, and she said she was talking to him, and he said and said that he said that her his wife told her what he had to told him what he had to stitch, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, they said, "Why don't you come stitch with us?" And I don't know that I ever will. Uh, I I don't really. I'm more of a I 
I'm so introverted I don't really and I'm not much of a conversationalist so I don't think that I would be uh, very comfortable there and plus my setup is I take up my our entire kitchen table when we stitch and there's just not room enough for me over there to to be able to set up all my stuff and all that kind of stuff but anyway I'll show you what this looks like I have I have part of it covered and that's for privacy reasons uh, there are people who, on, on this who haven't given my their permission to me to show their names so um, so I'm sorry about that but that's the way it has to be but this is what it looks like so I am just so happy with it it looks so wonderful it's really sparkly uh, the butterflies are all stitched with blending filament and then the the gold metallics cord on the frame all the way around it that really sparkles and then there's blending filament in the flowers uh, that are in the in the hill underneath the tree so it's really sparkly and you're not going to be able to see that but it just it's just really sparkly and really pretty I chose a gold frame and there's like filigree in the in the frame I really like that I thought gold would be appropriate because it's a 50th wedding anniversary gift and I, I really like the mats that I chose too. Um, yeah, no, I am so excited to I'm so excited to show this to my uh, to give this to my parents. Uh, when I after I'd made my decisions as to how I was going to have it done, uh, my wife asked me what I'd done, and I said, well, I chose pink and pink and red mats. And she got she got this strange look on her face, and she says, "I don't think pink and red go together." And I said, "Well, it's not." And and she wasn't. She says she was really nervous about seeing it. But when I showed it to her, she said, "Oh, well, that's not pink and red. That's rose and burgundy, and they look very nice." So I guess that's uh, when I I can see shades of colors, but. I don't have names for them, or I, I wouldn't automatically come up with those names. Whereas my wife, my wife uses uses names of shades, so I guess that's one difference between her and me. But I really like it. And finally, to close, I want to do the twenty things about me tag. Um, I almost did it last time, but I had a hard time coming up with 20 different things. I've enjoyed seeing some of your videos, and you guys have given me ideas of things that I can say. So I think I have 20 things. Uh, we'll see. I may have more than 20. Uh, we'll, you can count along with me, and we'll see how many we have. So uh, first of all, I grew up on a ranch in the middle of nowhere, uh, 20 miles from the nearest town, uh, 3 miles from the nearest neighbor. And it was it was really quite isolated, and uh, I still I kind of miss living there because I, I miss the quiet of not having, not hearing city sounds all the time. It was so isolated that when when my parents first moved there, um, in the winter time the county did not maintain the roads, and the second winter that we were there was a really bad winter, and we were snowed in from November till May. The only way that we could get through town to town was on snowmobiles, and I have vague memories of that time. I was I was two, and um, all I remember I remember being on snowmobiles and being cold. I, I that's one of the things I remember. Uh, also, we lived at the time when we first moved in there. We lived in a little house that was on top, that had a crawl space underneath, and. When I was like three or four, we had rattlesnakes that decided that they wanted to nest underneath the house. Um, and because of that experience, I'm not really a fan of snakes. Um, it was so isolated that we didn't have a telephone until I was 14. And my town made national news uh, when we got telephones. So I mu must have been like the last place on, in the United States that got a telephone. Um, as long as we're admitting to not having teeth or having fake teeth, this is a fake tooth. This is actually a flipper. Um, I knocked, when I was 16, I knocked this tooth out on a water slide. I lost control and took a, great, a big bike out of the bottom of the slide and knocked my tooth out. 
Uh, they stopped the slide and went looking for it and put it back in my mouth. And about six months later, I had a root canal and I've had a crown on that tooth forever. But my current dentist uh, has said that my uh, the, the roots were starting to resorb and that it was time to, to pull that tooth. And I'm in the process of, I have an implant. I'm waiting for the bone to grow around the implant. Uh, in about a month, I'm going to be, we're going to start the process of getting a crown. I will be so happy about that. This, this flipper is the biggest pain. I have this big uh, mass of plastic in my mouth and it, it makes it hard for me to even speak or eat. It's, it's not fun to deal with. So I'll be glad to get a crown again. I still have one wisdom tooth. Uh, when it came time to remove my wisdom teeth, the dentist had a hard time with, with the, this wisdom tooth, this upper wisdom tooth. Um, my bottom wisdom teeth were taken out when I was 14. Uh, but when it came time to remove the top one, he had a really hard time with this one. And, and he looked at this one and said it was even higher and that it would never come in and that if he tried to, that he risked putting a hole in one of my sinuses, which we didn't want to do, so we left it in. So I still have a little bit of wisdom left. Um, I am the oldest of eight. I have six brothers and one sister. So there's, there's, there's eight of us. Uh, one of us is a girl, the rest of us are boys. So I have lots of brothers. Uh, I also have over 30 nieces and nephews. I have lots of nieces and nephews. And I have a couple of brothers that are still having kids, so I could even have more than I have right now. Uh, if you know about the Myers-Briggs personality test, I am an ISTP. Uh, when I was in high school, I took uh, two years of German and spent a summer in Germany as part of an exchange with a school in Stuttgart. Um, we spent most of the time in Stuttgart, but we also uh, went to Berlin, uh, Frankfurt, Munich, uh, Innsbruck, um, uh, St. Gallen, Switzerland, all through the Alps. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience. Uh, that was back when there was East and West Germany. And going to Berlin, we, we did it on a train traveling through East Germany, and that was, that was an interesting experience. Um, I mentioned I spent two years in Argentina. I was in Argentina on an LDS mission. I spent most of my time in Buenos Aires. I also was in a small town called Tunujan, which is on the southern side of the, uh, on the western side of the country in, the, in Mendoza province. Um, and I love Argentina. Uh, because I lived there, I, I speak Spanish, but my Spanish is Argentine Spanish. The, they will call it, uh, the Argentines call it uh, Castellano. So I speak Castellano. Uh, the pronunciation is a little bit different, um, uh, and even the way they conjugate some of their verbs is a little bit different. So some of their conjugations are a little bit different. And my my kids who have taken high school Spanish, they they kind of give me a hard time because of the way I talk sometimes. But I think I talk correct, and that they're just uh, they're just mistaken. <laughs> um, I, I I really loved Argentina, and I would love to be able to go back there someday. Um, I made some really good friends, and um, I would love to see how it's changed. Um, I think that right next to my big American flag that I have in my heart, I have a small Argentine flag. Um, I also spent a month in Israel. Uh, it was part of a business trip. Uh, we'd work during the week, and then on the weekends we'd go, go touring. Uh, we went all over Israel from... Uh, the south, uh, the Red Sea, we, a town called Elat, uh, clear up to the Golan Heights. Of course, we went to Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and um, everything in between, the Jordan River Valley. Um, and it, that was really a good experience. It was uh, interesting being in a place where there's so much history and where uh, there were seeing places that are mentioned in the Bible. It was, it was really, really a fascinating thing to do. Um, I am one of the few people, I think, that loves the novel, The Lord of the Rings, and can't stand to watch the movie. Um, I play organ, you know that. I also play piano, which is probably pretty obvious. Um, I also was in band. I'm what would be considered a band geek. 
and I play uh, I, I play flute. I played flute all the way up until high school and, and all the way through high school. But in high school, I also started playing bassoon. So I played flute and bassoon. I haven't played bassoon for 30 years because I used a school instrument and I don't have my own bassoon, which I kind of regret. But uh, I really enjoyed playing bassoon. Uh, if you're a geek, uh, when it comes or into the, I guess, the text editing world, um, in the great uh, debate between which text editor is better, VI or Emacs, I fall on the VI side. Um, and I don't know how this happened, but everybody at work thinks I'm the VI guru. So um, I'm also left-handed. I'm left-handed for uh, writing and for eating and for stitching. Um, and I'm right-handed for sports and for cutting because my mom taught me to cut right-handed because she didn't have left-handed scissors. Uh, when I shave, I, I, I gave up uh, on going with all the, these razors that have four and five blades. I shave with an old-fashioned safety razor and shaving cream and a brush. Um, I have, I've done that for several years now, and uh, shaving that way makes, makes it actually enjoyable. I love to shave that way. Uh, I, I love uh, using a brush to put nice, warm, foamy shaving cream on my face and then scraping it off with, uh, with one blade. It's also a lot cheaper. I mean, I, the last time I bought razor blades was like three or four years ago, and I don't have to spend $10 for five blades or however much you have to do now. So those are the 20 things about me. Uh, once... Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for spending time for me with me. Uh, this video has been a bit, little bit longer than usual. Uh, so thank you for your patience and thank you for spending time with me. I hope that you have a great July and that you enjoy your summers. Uh, as always, if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, you will see my daily progress pictures of, of what I'm doing. And I'll, also, uh, I want to mention one other thing. I've had several people send me private messages on Instagram, and if I'm not following you, I don't get a notification. So if you have sent me a private message and then waited like a long time before I respond, that's not intentional. It's just because I, I don't see those when they come through. Um, I do eventually, but I just don't think about checking to see if somebody sent me a, pri a private message. So if you want to send me private messages, it might be, I think, if you send them by... Uh, through YouTube instead of Instagram, I'm probably more likely to see it. Unless I follow, if I follow you on Instagram, I'll see it. Uh, but if I don't follow you, um, then I won't see it. And um, I, I tried to, it, it's not working now, but at the t I was trying to foil Instagram's advertisements by only only following, liking cross stitch pictures. So if you're, if you're, I, if your account is mostly cross stitch, I I'm probably likely to follow you. If you post a bunch of private uh, of pictures of other things, I'm I'm not likely to follow you. Uh, I'm on it. The whole point of my Instagram account is is cross stitch, and I'm trying to keep the the advertisements from finding me. And that hasn't worked in the last month or so. I've started to see a lot more advertisements on Instagram. But um, anyway, so. Uh, if, if I follow you on Instagram, I will see your private message. If not, it may take me a while to respond to you, and it's not that I'm ignoring you. I just, I just haven't seen your message. So I try to respond when I can. Uh, if I don't follow you on Instagram and you know that, uh, it might be easier for you to PM me on YouTube. Whatever. But anyway, I uh, hope you have a great summer. Uh, thank you for, for spending time with me, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.